uh, folks uh, on this issue and others. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's probably the best part of this, all these people that I've met. And good folks. And thank you for coming. And me, Mary, Esther. Um, so anyway, on with the program. If you guys didn't pick up on uh, the take-home message, uh, is up here on the table. This is this boils it down very simply, and I'm going to go through this. Uh, what you know, pretty much item by item, it shouldn't take very long. But what I want to show you is that we have documentation for all these points. This isn't something that we just dreamed up. And uh, Dennis Price will talk to you further about it out in the field. So, um, what Sable Trail says is the closest karst feature to the proposed pipeline route is 750 feet from the center line where they're going to drill under the Swanee River. Between mile marker 266.8, which is right here on the map, and 267.3, which is right here. That's about that's a half mile distance through the state park that the Swanee or that Sable Trail is going to start back here and drill under the state park, under the river, and come up over here. They say, they say that 750 feet is the closest karst feature. This table right here, are all these highlighted marks are the karst features that Sable Trail found in this area. A quarter mile this way and a quarter mile that way. Closest one, 750 feet. Do you guys see that other pavilion over there? Mm -hmm. we measured it today with a range finder, 370 feet. So pretty much double that is the closest karst feature to the pipeline. According to Sable Trail. According to Sable Trail. Now Dennis Price's report in his conclusions about this area, he says active sinkhole features too numerous to locate but very evident on the LIDAR map. Every blue feature. This right here. This white line is the pipeline route. These blue features are sinkholes. And if you have this on a computer screen, you can see it in much more detail. I counted 30 of them in that picture. And that's just of a small area. That's not of the, that map only shows this, you know, small area. So how, how did they come up with 750 feet away? So you guys can see that. Keep that in mind when you're out there hiking. Okay, Sable Trail has repeatedly stated that they use LIDAR technology for surveying distance. Imaging to evaluate uh, to evaluate the route. Sable Trail has also stated that field surveys provide a more site-specific data. Well, this is, this is LIDAR, this is LIDAR. This is the area where the, the pipeline is going through. The, thing, the key thing here is the blues are the lowest elevations, reds are the highest elevations. So it gives you a really good detail of the topography there. You can see how complex it is and how low it is. But uh, if what we're saying is if Sable Trail used LIDAR or field surveys, why didn't they come up with what Dennis came up with? Uh, and why, did, why didn't they find what you'll see out on the hike today? Uh, and why cannot they come up with the data? Your office, Jessica, has asked for LIDAR data from Sable Trail and they have yet to produce it. I've asked repeatedly. Right. Others have asked repeatedly. So did they even do it? Is the question. And or they don't want to include it. Or they don't want to include it because it includes stuff like this. Uh, did they do field surveys? Well, we don't know. Um, the closest, car, uh, closest first magnitude spring to the pipeline route is Madison Blue Spring. At 1.7 miles. That's what they're saying. In fact, the closest first magnitude spring is Lime Run Spring. Lime Run Spring right here in this park. 
and uh, it's the outlet for the uh, Falmouth Cathedral cave system. Now, this LIDAR map shows, and uh, we got this from uh, Swanee River Water Management, by the way, thank you. Um, this, is, this is a cave system, a Falmouth Cathedral cave system. And it shows that it, it comes out here at Lime Run uh, Spring. And the route that's pinned in on this goes right across uh, Highway 90, Highway 90 and uh, the CXS Railroad. It'll go under that and then over the top of the cave system. And, you know, right, right here. So this is that, it is a cave system, but it's also a spring conduit. And then we have, this is a sign that's located here in the park that, that tells about this cave system. And it's one of the longest underwater cave systems in the world. Mm -hmm. And people from all over the world come to dive it. So it's a great recreation uh, feature for this park and, you know, for the region. Uh, the Falmouth Cathedral Cave System is approximately 100 feet below the ground surface where the pipeline will cross under Highway 90 and CXS Railroad. That's what Sable Trail is saying, that the roof of the cave is approximately 100 feet below. Well, Dennis's report shows that it's about 30 feet below the land surface. And this is another uh, report that we've got. We've got another geologist, uh, Peter Schroeder, that uh, he's in the middle of doing a, uh, another geological survey of this area. And he forwarded this diagram to me that corroborates what Dennis is saying. He's got the elevation marks, and right there at the crossing, he's saying that it's about 28 feet. So... We've got two reports saying roughly 30 feet to the cave system versus Sable's 100 feet. And, yeah, they've got to go under this road, so they're going to be very close to the top of this cave system. And, you know, that's what it puts this uh, cave and spring conduit at risk of collapse. The river, the say, okay, Sable Trail lead geologist uh, he says the rivers are the base of the groundwater flow system and are the discharge areas. There's little or no flow between or beneath the river. Potential impacts are confined to the vicinity. Uh, the first item that we have is, the, is a dye test uh, from DEP and Swanee River Water Management. This dye test shows uh, connectivity between uh, springs, excuse me, the Falmouth Cathedral Cave System, and springs in the area. Let's see. Here. And uh, anyway, the uh, Lime Run Spring that you see this Falmouth Cathedral Cave System connected to here is not the only spring that is connected to the Falmouth Cathedral Cave System. We've got Ellaville Spring, Swanacoochee Spring, and Lime Spring up here on the river. All of four of those springs have been shown to be connected to this spring conduit. So this could have a dramatic effect on this park and these springs if anything was to happen with that uh, cave system. And the, this map over here, these purple lines on here show all the map caves in this area, except for the Fallon Cave. And you can see that there is water flow under the river in these caves because they go under the river. This particular cave system goes under the Swanee, Goes all the way up here, goes under the Withlacoochee, under the Withlacoochee again, and under the Withlacoochee again. So these, there is plenty of water flow under the river, and you can see how far felt an effect here would be felt 
potentially, or vice versa. Um, and as many of you know that live around this area, when the water rises in the river, your wells turn brown. Mm -hmm. And we get surface water contamination into these wells. Well, some of these wells are miles from the river. Mm -hmm. And so this, this shows that, that impacts that are happening at the river can be felt for miles. So we've tried to lay it out, you know, as, as close as, as we could. The one thing I think I forgot was that the spring was uh, <coughs> Lime Run Springs close to, uh, closer than 1.7 miles. You can see right the, right here, Madison Springs. You can see where the pipeline route is, and they show it. Madison Blue Spring, 1.7 miles from the pipeline. Lime Run Spring and Falmouth Spring, right here, the pipeline goes right between them. They're not even on their, their data. They've ignored it. And they're much closer than 1.7 miles. They're less than a mile, way less. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the exact, I'm not a surveyor, didn't survey it, but you can see on this map that Sable Trail just left that information out of their documentation. Um, see if I covered everything. Is it that close to Blue Spring, Amara? 1.7. Chris, what's really scary is Madison Blue Springs, yes. Chris, what is really scary is their contingency plan, if they do break through the cave top, the way they're going to fix it is going to put concrete and pump concrete well, into there, which if they do that, it's silly at all. They can't fill that's, it anyway. That's they in will their, block this flow out of there. That's in their cars mitigation that's plan. In, that's is, in that, that, the EIS but, report. That's right. the plan. But it's they, nothing. They say, uh, according to Dennis's report here, <laughs> Sable Trail doesn't have a cars mitigation plan to address a cave they collapse. They don't? No. Not if that was if that were to happen on that cave system. Well, why um, place is that they concrete into it? They, well, that's, that's if they uh, have a, a, uh, a sinkhole oh, okay. or, right. or uh, over, you know, off, along the route as they're, as they're uh, putting okay. the pipeline in, installing the pipeline, to my understanding. Which is truly not a plan. You, you can't right. fill it with, with concrete and not expect a conduit to be impaired by that. Right, right. same thing. But I'd also like to point out um, this, this, these two areas right here, the uh, Swanee River Crossing site and the Falmouth Crossing site, that's what we have scientific data to back up our claims. Dennis has been kind enough to do a report on it, and we've got another geologist working on it. Uh, but there are other areas of concern um, that are similar to this raise the same kind of questions. We've got uh, just uh, down here in the southern Swanee County where this uh, pipeline is to go over another cave system, the Little River Cave System. And right just south of that is the compressor station site. And then you go to Marion County, like Janet was pointing out, there's the Rainbow River area. And she, she showed me uh, where there's a known spring the Rainbow River uh, Spring, and then a karst window, and if you draw and, and the pipeline, and if you draw a line right between, between those three features, you know, you, yeah, you know that there's a conduit under there. Uh, just common sense to tell you. So the other the other thing, uh, you know, we talk all talk about we're worried about the economy. Well, Safe Trail says, you know, this is going to be great. We're going to bring jobs, et cetera. We all know that there's only going to be a handful of permanent jobs. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. According to DEP and the Florida Park Service, this park right here, Swanee River State Park, says during a year of average river flows, annual park attendance at Swanee River State Park is usually more than 700,000 with direct economic impact 
of more than 30 million. Right there. So any impacts that this pipeline is going to uh, create will have direct economic impact on this region. Who's your son for for the state park? Okay. Uh, DEP, trail, greenways and trails. And there's a huge and, water bottling plant on Blue Springs right. that is huge. And employs all the people in that region. So, so anyway, just to kind of conclude, you know, this, this iconic uh, Swanee River, you know, it's been a cultural and economic resource dating back to when the indigenous people inhabited this area, these lands. Uh, and it's my feeling that uh, history will judge us today whether we've been good stewards or not of this river. And so I'm ready to go for, for a hike. Okay. <laughs>